It doesn't work that way, Yolanda. Are you gonna get married or not? Well, how many times can I repeat it? Yolanda shuddered, stopped looking out the window and hurried to do what she was told. A job is a job and who were you looking for, a fiancé? I'm right again, the senior nurse said. No, I don't care about fiancés. Yolanda involuntarily looked out the window and the hospital courtyard was empty. Only an elderly janitor, Stephen, was sweeping the courtyard in his usual measured and leisurely rhythm. I know who the head nurse was. She only shook her head. She's a strange woman. This Yolanda lives with her grandmother. She doesn't know anything about her parents, whether they are dead or something else. Yes, they only live in a small house on the outskirts of the hospital and live in a progeny. You don't have to be seven feet tall to understand the reason. Grandma is ill and most of the money after she has gone to the hay. Within the walls of the clinic, only the chief physician. Yes, and that's for the cause, all the rest of us, before further career. If you cross him, you're in disgrace. You can forget about summer vacation and the naked time worked in advance. Unlike the others, Emily knew how to approach Nicholas without the slightest embarrassment that he was married. What to be ashamed of, people, grown-ups? What can you say? T is not the red maiden knows what she's doing. She is not such a fool. I like this, Yolanda. And she had to catch such a trick. Last week, she poured dirty water on the superintendent. Either way, the bucket slipped out of her hands or something else. Yes, she just poured it all over Nicholas's shoes and pants. So he shouted, how indignant he was, and sorbed the air with his sonorous voice, but Yolanda only stood back and lowered her eyes, refusing to let her sister take it. But that was the end of Emily's sympathy for her subordinate. She didn't like it. She didn't like Yolanda. Oh, how she didn't like it. You'd have to figure out what was in her quiet pool. And you can expect anything from people like that. Of course, Yolanda didn't know all this and could only guess why the head nurse didn't like her. The nurse once again thought about the strange dog she had seen in the hospital courtyard. Could it be imagined? But Yolanda had seen this dog a couple of days ago. Once again, having changed the water for clean water, she went to clean the right wing of the building where the so-called wards were located. According to Yolanda herself, they were treated in the same way as everyone else. Yolanda smiled politely at the patient's displeasure. Yes, of course, let's. As you should, Yolanda, you don't bother me at all. The nurse smiled back, thanked the patient for understanding and started working. She knew that Brian was a businessman and, from the words of the head of the department, possessed impressive poses. Viola saw in his eyes only frozen sadness and nothing more. Brian's illness was heavy. Being near this pleasant-looking man, the nurse sincerely sympathized with him and wished him a speedy recovery. Thank you, Yolanda. Tell me, what do we have today outside the window, sun or cloudy? I'm embarrassed to ask about such things. Yes, I just don't have any strength left to get out of bed. I can't get out of bed, I'm so weak, but it's still unclear, Brian. You can't see the sun at all, but there are rays breaking through the clouds. That's good. Sunshine, that's life. She nodded and continued wiping the floor with a damp cloth. Disinfection and cleanliness are, first of all, a guarantee of health, both for the patient and the medical worker. I caught the door swinging open and a woman of years with a haughty expression on her well-groomed and glossy. Yolanda looked at her and Carla is an extremely prone woman for whom to cause a scandal. Yolanda's partner, Maria, a nurse, always repeated that she had done well for herself. Maybe they'll divide her money by 10 years old, and the fact that she's sick is just a good thing, so she won't become rich, and the day will be inherited by Yolanda. Yolanda never liked such talk, but today, the meeting with Carla left in her soul the most contradictory feeling. The brazenly defiant behavior of this rich woman. No. Yolanda gave in and, of course, did not show her character. Who is she? Who is Carla? But the gulf between them is such that, even for a thousand years, it is impossible to build a bridge. Nothing. I'll wait for her to go away, then I'll go into the room and clean up. Having put a bucket in the corridor, Yolanda thought that, through the door, which was not tightly closed, the voices of Brian and his wife could be heard, of course. Yolanda was not eavesdropping, but patiently waiting for the visitor to leave. You really think so? And your son is my son, Carla? And when did he become my family? Yes, I've been raising Kevin since he was 15 years old, but my teaching hasn't been good for him. 
Last week, he wrecked his new car again. And a couple of days before that, he got into a fight at the casino in Skopje. You think Carla's son should be like that, even if he's adopted, Carla, her husband? Thought he was sick, but he could outdo anyone in verbal battles. Brian, don't be so hard on Kevin. You'll see that after this event, he'll change, and I'll talk to him. How can your son change only in one direction? I'm already scared to receive calls on the phone every time I sit and wonder where they're calling from. The hospital, police, or the store where he broke the window again? The businessman made it clear by the tone of his voice that he was very tired and wanted to rest. Instead, she started defending her son, whose problems her husband had to solve long ago. Tired of waiting for Carla to leave the palace, she howled in the street to have a chat with the janitor. Good morning, Stephen. Have you seen a dog around here? Well, a big one. She asked Stephen and looked at the nurse appraisingly, as if deciding whether to tell her the truth or not. So he really exists? No, Yolanda, I called him Alex. He may not be Alex at all. Of course, the owner of the beach is an old, retired man living alone. I understand him. A dog is a joy, added the janitor. But where is the owner Alex now? Carefully asked Yolanda. Yes, he's in intensive care. He was hit by a car on the street. Some speeding drivers flew by at speed. They say the dog felt everything, broke the window, and rushed to his owner. The ambulance driver told me that Alex lay down next to his owner and started licking him with his tongue. Stephen is a good man, simple but very heartfelt. Having talked a little more, Yolanda approached his back room and almost immediately saw a black nose sticking out of the gap in the doorway. Alex, what a handsome boy you are. Yolanda saw Carla walk out of the clinic building with a confident gait. Her car was parked in a parking lot, which would have taken several years to buy. Well, now we can go back and clean the ward normally, she thought, and she waved to the janitor and added, I'm going to go, Stephen. Alex, don't miss me. I'll drop by later. My grandmother wrapped such delicious pies for lunch. He walked Yolanda almost all the way to the entrance and then returned to the back room. Brian, the return of the nurse, was received with a happy smile on his lips. Yolanda's back. I'm sorry about that. I'm sorry about your job being disrupted by your chatter. The businessman sighed sadly and thought about it, feeling his attentive gaze on her. Yolanda was embarrassed and started cleaning again. A heavy analytical work, a couple of times he wanted to call Yolanda, but then calmed down, beginning to doubt the correctness of his conclusions. Finally, the businessman made up his mind and, like a drowning man at the very last moment, hurried to grasp the saving straw. Brian began from afar, cautiously asking Yolanda, When is your vacation? I don't know, probably in December. Four months to wait, no less. She answered, intercepting the patient's gaze. Carefully, asked Brian, who came in with a violent cuff. But after he came to his senses, he still answered, I need your help, Yolanda. It so happens that there is no one to talk to except you. She looked at the businessman with surprise. Then a simple nurse. Can you help him? Yes, it sounded even as... Meanwhile, Brian continued. I want you to play the role of my daughter. Well, for a short time, and of course not for free. In astonishment, Yolanda's breath caught and the mop fell out of her hands with a nasty metallic clang against the tiles of the floor. To become your daughter? Is this a joke? No, it's not a joke. I'm sorry for taking the bull by the horns like this, but I'm sorry. I'm so quick to... I took the bull by the horns, but there's no time for preparation, no. You see, my new business partners are all family people. Well, they go out on weekends and spend their leisure time together. They try to find out everything about the future partner before they make a deal. Brian, where am I and where is the business? Yolanda couldn't resist. Yolanda could see from the businessman's face that he doesn't like to hurry and intends to lay everything out in front of her interlocutor, but not at once, but gradually. Yolanda, don't judge me harshly, but here's the thing. These investors intend to organize a corporate party for the children of all the employees of the deal. You know, all grown up. A house for them on the riverbank will be rented, as will a disco. In general, a party follows the organizers' plan. It should unite all those who take part in this business project. The move is actually correct, of course, so none of the present. And if he didn't have the operation, he wouldn't have more than a month to live. So it's either pan or lost. Well, Carla, I understand you. I'll be there on time. But I'll call you beforehand. The notary said dryly. Deep down, he was very shocked by the news Carla had told him. 
He had known Brian for a long time and had always thought of him as a strong and determined man. Carla and Paul have been seeing each other more and more often lately, as if anticipating the imminent outcome caused by Brian's possible death. Well, how is he still alive? What health he has? Think that I'm like that. That would hide it from you? Yes, as soon as Brian introduces himself, the whole town will be buzzing as if worried. Just be patient a little longer. The operation will be the last one for him, if it were up to him. Giora snorted contemptuously. He would have sent that rich man to the other world long ago. He had tweaked the brakes, but all to no avail. One day, he even wanted to burn his house outside the city, but it didn't work out. The firemen, as luck would have it, were nearby. Not only did they cut off the back wall of the house and put it under a lot of water from the hydrants, no matter how much Paul fought, but all to no avail. The businessman behaved as if nothing had happened, as if not noticing the attempt on his life. So Paul decided to take this desperate step. Though the recidivist was strong in spirit and in the dwelling of the fortune teller, there were about 50 daisy strings. All the trappings typical of a fortune teller were present. Brooches, brooches, balls of mediums, and other tinsel. Having listened to the visitor, she asked the bandit to give her a photo of the person on whom she was to cast a spell. Paul had a premonition of such a question and readily handed her a photo of Brian. The fortune teller's face crumpled the photo seriously, tearing its edges. Are you having a seizure or something? Paul asked anxiously. But Daisy only shook her head and said that she needed time and that the result would definitely come. Otherwise, I wouldn't give money in advance. Before pouring cold sweat, of course, he cheated Daisy and never paid any money for her services. And he didn't even pay for her services. Lovers Carla and Paul were waiting for the businessman's ear in the next world, and Teresa's help in this matter was simply invaluable. I watched Yolanda try on one dress after another. She couldn't hold back a sweet smile. It seemed that the young nurse was ready to rank the whole store, and on her precise figure, any little acceptable outfit looked cheek. There's only a coachman and a carriage missing. Lacking admiringly looking at her reflection in the mirror, she said, Yolanda, nothing. Everything is still ahead of you and the carriage and coachman, answered Teresa. Everything was going well until Yolanda came to the beauty salon to get her hair done. That's when the trouble started. First, she had a manicure, painting her nails a disgusting swampy color. She wanted to be indignant, but the master immediately assured her that such a color scheme is in fashion now. Swallowing her resentment, Yolanda sat down in the hairdresser's chair. And that's where she wanted only a little perm to turn the ends of her chair into the curls she liked so much in her childhood. But instead, Yolanda was persuaded to have her hair colored. And that's where the main trap awaited her. The master cleverly switched the dye and dyed her hair with such a color that Yolanda covered her eyes with her hands in horror. God, what have you done? Why has my hair become like an alien's hair dough? How am I going to meet you now? Hardly holding back tears, Yolanda exclaimed, at that moment, she went to the clinic, where Brian was already being prepared for surgery. Icy tone, said the manager, who had received detailed input a couple of hours ago. Yes, I don't have time for recoloring, you see. I have to leave for a meeting in half an hour. In one breath, Yolanda blurted out and left the hated salon. In the fresh air, the color of the girl's hair seemed even more shocking. Passers-by stopped and pointed their fingers at her in amazement. Knowing the address where the meeting was to take place, Yolanda called the cab and waited for the car. And at that time, Kevin, squeezing with laughter, let his hillbilly try to get away with it. A special thanks to the girls from the salon. I'll tell them that I won't forget this favor. I also think you won't stop halfway, so drop this puppy in the swamp of lies invented by Arkasha. Smiling, said Carla. Five minutes ago, she received a call from Nicholas, informing her that Brian was being prepared for surgery. That means it won't take long to learn such interesting news from his former wife. Paul was rubbing his hands together. I hope that tomorrow he will be able to see Carla. Yolanda had to drive for about 40 minutes before the driver brought her to a huge cottage located a couple of hundred meters from the riverside, and the gate and the front door were just facing the river itself. Wow, what a beauty! Yolanda involuntarily admired, forgetting for a moment about the discomfort associated with her hair. Yes, a real paradise for the rich, of course. They say that the complex has two swimming pools, a tennis court, a bar, and a dance floor. Obligingly, if you need to be picked up from here, call me anytime. 
Yolanda nodded and handed over the money. The massive gate was unlocked, and soon the girl was on the territory of the estate, which looked like a miniature city for entertainment. There were already a few young men who had arrived a little earlier than Yolanda when they saw her unusual hairstyle. They immediately expressed their admiration. That's a real fashion challenge, they said, expressing their admiration for the newcomer. And she smiled and soon found herself in a very cozy environment, where her wealthier peers were enjoying life and having a good time. Outwardly, there was no difference between them. There was no difference between them, just a group of young people who, by the will of their parents, found themselves in such a paradisical place. Yolanda danced, made new acquaintances, and rested her soul as she had never rested before. Meters from the water's edge. She felt happy without even realizing at that very moment, a drunken Kevin was heading towards the country mansion. The impudent major literally burst into the party like an angry beast, climbing up. He grabbed the microphone and spoke at the top of his voice. Ladies, gentlemen, please pay attention for a moment. Now you will learn some very interesting news. Among us there is a werewolf and a liar. A man who pretends to be someone else, or rather to say, another. Yolanda turned pale and froze on the spot from shock. His words caused a great resonance among the young people. And she became the object of everyone's attention again, but this time no one admired her. On the contrary, kind and smiling people looked at Yolanda with condemnation, showing that they did not want to communicate. Tears flowed down her cheeks, burning her skin with salty streams of bitterness and shame. Her soul was torn with pain, rushing around like a caged animal. The young nurse suddenly wanted to be free, to be alone with herself, and to cry until her eyes were red from tears. Yolanda's legs were carrying her to the river, but she kept walking forward to the water, which would cool down her heated and hot body, and the water should wash away all the dirt of lies and deceit. Like an incantation whispered Yolanda, whose consciousness had become clouded and covered with a sticky fog. Teresa, who jumped out of the car and ran towards her, throwing off her shoes, said, Yolanda, stop. You don't need to wait, sweetheart. You must know that they don't go away. Brian left his will on you and rewrote the whole business. Yolanda shuddered and slowly turned around. The water reached her almost to her chest when Teresa forcefully pulled her arm under her arm. But she didn't know anything. Boris is the head of everyone. Because of this unfortunate situation, nothing in her ears still sounded like the taunts of the majors who had chased her away from his private party and her heart was beating like crazy. Only a little later, when it became known that Brian had safely undergone the operation, Teresa explained to Yolanda what was going on. Daisy, who ironically turned out to be Brian's classmate, remembered him as a kind and noble man. Naturally, she did not cast any spoils because she did not do that. In the case of Brian, the fortune teller could not remain an indifferent witness and honestly told him about the enemy. At that moment, in the businessman's head, all the pieces of the puzzle came together, including the accident on the road when he miraculously survived and the burned country house where he was saved by firemen. The identity of his enemy and continued to believe his wife and stepson. But when Daisy identified the recidivist Paul in one of the photos, everything fell into place. In this old family photo, Carla was standing in an embrace with her first husband, Paul. Not long before he received his first prison sentence, Brian realized that a clever and calculating dragon with three heads, which belonged to Paul, Carla, and their son Kevin, was working against him, realizing that he would not be left alone. The beauty salon is to secretly bring the boss of the notary, Arturo, to make changes to the will. All this was done half an hour before the operation to survive turned out to be as simple as everything. Genius bequeathed the company to a complete stranger. Brian deliberately took himself out of the picture because... In this case, his death would not have made any sense for Carla and Paul. Of course, he risked a lot, but he had seen many good people in his life and immediately identified their traits about the young nurse and realized that she was the right person for him. It so happened that Brian could not have children all his life because he carried this heavy burden on his shoulders. Believing Carla, he happily married her, dreaming of becoming a father to her teenage son Kevin. But as time went on, he became more promiscuous and cruel taking the best from his biological father, the recidivist Paul. Many people at the time condemned Brian for not deciding to take a baby from an orphanage and raise the child as a businessman should. Simply Smash was afraid of responsibility, doubting his own strengths and abilities. And only when Brian found himself on the threshold of death did he realize 
that he could no longer live like that. He had buried himself a long time ago, but still, before he could go to the next world, he wanted to do something good. For this very reason, he bequeathed everything to Yolanda, being sure that this money would bring her real happiness. But fate had decided otherwise. Brian not only underwent the operation, but also slowly recovered. When he saw his classmate Daisy in the ward, he was very surprised. Here, I came to check on you. You don't know, but I've been praying for your health all this time. I profess goodness, and I never did what attributed to me, intercepting the businessman's glance, explained the guests. Thank you, Daisy. It helped me a lot. The door of the ward opened, and on the threshold appeared a smiling in all 32 nast, but this time with a young nurse who was no longer so habitual for her bucket and mop. Well, hello, Daddy. I have to call you so now, Brian, joked Yolanda, and she sat down on the edge of the bed. During the time the businessman was in rehabilitation, a lot of things happened. First of all, Brian filed for a divorce, entrusting this process to his lawyer. He also refused to help his stepson Kevin, when he was involved in another drunk driving accident. But when the police studied the video surveillance footage, it turned out that it was Kevin who had hit a pensioner on an inconspicuous street a few weeks ago. Ironically, this kindest grandfather turned out to be the owner of Alex. I could have refused Brian's offer and not taken Alex in, she remarked in a conversation with Daisy. Yes, I was in love with Brian myself in my school days. I used to chase after him in my dreams, but I was just naturally full of blood and milk, you know? They call them pudgy. I thought he didn't like me. After graduation, I got depressed. I even suffered, but then my abilities opened up in me. You see, after how many years, I saved our cash. And now I'll never let him go. Tears glistened in Yolanda's corners. She'd never heard such a touching story before, and she's unlikely to hear it. After everything that happened, Brian started calling Yolanda his daughter. Come on, I've applied for a correspondence course in economics, so I learned something. And if not, you'll help me. Brian put one arm around Daisy's shoulders, and the other pressed Yolanda to him. You know, you only invite me to the wedding as soon as possible. I liked a guy named Felipe. You see, he didn't laugh at me when Kevin poured mud on me from the stage. He also said he fell in love with my hairstyle. You know, the very pink one? Like from an intergalactic ship? And what to do now? I can't think of anything. In the back streets of a working class village, Daisy and Susan, whose infectious laughter seemed like divine music to her granddaughter, were laughing in tune with him. Yolanda herself was laughing too, and Yolanda had her nose in Alex's hand who had become a full-fledged member of their newly happy family. Thank you for watching the rest of the story. If you liked it, please support me with a thumbs up button.